70% of the world is water. 70% of our bodies are water. Water is one of the most transformational elements in our universe. Water is the essence of life. Water teaches us things. If we can learn from water, we can learn to accept ourselves more fully and thus participate and be more full in the world. Water impacts and shapes the physical world, much like the events we go through shape our lives. Water has always been a connection point. It was the first form of transportation. It connected land masses that were thousands of miles apart and thus connected people as well. Water is still a connection. It connects us to our lives. It connects us to our past and allows us to be able to flow into our future. I can't swim. I grew up next to one of the Great Lakes and I can't swim. Now, I know how not to drown, which often means staying in the shallow end of the pool where I can stand flat foot. I played two seasons of my professional career in Cairns, Australia, home of the Great Barrier Reef. That's where Nemo got his journey started for those of you that are unfamiliar. <laughs> Towards the end of my second season, I felt the water calling me. I, started, I decided to do something totally outrageous, totally out my comfort zone, snorkel. Now, before you laugh at me too much, like a six foot eight scuba Steve, remember, you're talking about a kid that hasn't spent much time in water deeper than a bathtub. And now, I find myself navigating and interacting with thousands of fish and underwater life. It was captivating. It was one of the first times that I realized the significance of water in my life. I began to reflect on four specific ways that water shows up in our lives. They come from a time where questions needed answered, personal reflection was needed, and doing nothing was not an option. Now, these may not be the end-all, be-all four ways, but if you can accept these four ways, they'll often lead to a path where now you can use water as a visual to connect you to your most authentic self. For the next six minutes, we're gonna go on a journey and I'll invite you to learn from water, the universal truth of how you can authentically connect to your most authentic self. Our journey starts with the beauty of water. Have you ever thought about the ways that you've appreciated the beauty of water? Jumping in puddles as a child, fishing with that special relative, swimming with friends, a walk on a beautiful beach at night. We can all think about the way that beauty of water has captivated us. I think about the beauty of my life. I think about being a little boy in Cleveland, Ohio, playing basketball with my friends for no other reason than pure enjoyment and fun. We were just little boys doing something we loved with people we loved. There was no expectations no college scholarships, not even a will to win. We're just having fun. When I think about that thought, it takes me back and it reminds me that the beauty of my life is revolved around simplicity. That simplicity takes me to a place where I can accept myself and show up and appreciate the presence. And now I can see that presence in myself as well as in others. I am committed to living the rest of my life with that same simplicity, by doing things I love with people I love. What does the beauty of your life look like? The next part of our journey explores the destruction of water. Hurricane Katrina was coming ashore, 2005. I was literally on my way to the Atlanta airport to fly to Israel to start my season. I stopped on the side of the highway to meet my best friend, my college roommate, my college teammate. He was on his way to Gulfport, Mississippi to save and rescue. Some of his in-laws were there and some of them were unaccounted for. We met five, 10 minutes. I had a plane to catch. He had a highway to hit. He ended up getting to Gulfport, buying a boat and assisting in the rescue of a 78-year-old woman who had no opportunity to get outside of her house without him and the assistance. Those floods devastated parts of Mississippi, Louisiana, and other parts of the Southeast. 
It was catastrophic in the time. I think about the devastation of my life. My dad passing away in 2003, right in the middle of my professional career. Or I think about that 13-month span between January 2011 and February 2012, where I retired the game that I played my entire life, got divorced, got laid off from the corporate job I had, and filed bankruptcy. Times were dark. I learned myself in those dark times. I learned that life will often punch you in the face. And sometimes it'll hit you when everything is going well, and sometimes it'll kick you when you're down. I learned myself in those dark times. I learned that how I chose to navigate my mindset through those dark times was how I was going to ultimately succeed and push forward. What does the destruction in your life look like? And then what happens after the destruction often leads to more beauty. Table Mountain in South Africa, the Grand Canyon, snow-capped mountains of Alaska are all the result of years of destruction. I think about the resilience in my life and how the destruction is a part of greatness. Everybody says, trust the process, trust the process but very few people actually trust the process. The process could be sitting in that valley, realizing that the phase is teaching you how to climb the mountain. Growth is uncomfortable, and getting knocked down is much different from getting knocked out. I've come to realize that I'm here for a reason, and so are you. Where has resilience shown up in your life? The last phase of our journey explores the versatility of water. Water will take the shape of the container that holds it. If uncontained, it will flow freely. Below 32 degrees, it freezes. Above 212, it evaporates. I think about the versatility of my life, going from player to coach, going through a divorce, realizing mistakes made, and the, and the space that that created, which allowed me to become the best version of myself in my current relationship. One of my favorite phrases is versatility adds value. The depth of that phrase is so meaningful to me because change will happen. What I've learned is how to sit in that valley. Let the water hit me. Let the water mold me and know that I can always stand up and recreate myself. How has versatility allowed you to adapt into a new, different version of you? Of all these personalities of water, one word comes to mind, flow. My dad used to tell me that stagnation equals death. He used to tell me to keep moving, don't park, that slow steps are better than no steps. Remember. Water cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. I've invited you on a journey to see the connection between water and your life. More importantly, I've invited you on a journey to see the connection between you and your journey. When we are more connected to our journey, we are more connected to our authentic self. When we're more connected to our authentic self, we are more likely to be and present our most authentic self to others. In turn, they are more likely to be and present their most authentic self to us. Now we've started a path of true connection and authentic relationship. Treasure the beauty of your life. Learn from the destruction of your life. Recognize the resilience of your life. Embrace the versatility of your life. Keep moving. Keep pushing, keep flowing, because at the end of the day, water is life. Thank you. Here we go now.